Hi, year 10. Welcome back to an English lesson with a uh, homeschool. Um, as you can see, uh, we're looking today at comparing poetry again. The uh, situation last week was I tried to we tried to do one of these last week, uh, same kind of task where you wrote a paragraph comparing two poems, and it was a bit mixed. Some things were really good, and some bits weren't quite there yet. So I thought I'd try it again. I'm doing it a slightly different way today where the focus is, is going to kind of split into two different areas. So um, the two things we're looking at of comparing, which is the first word thing we're looking at, and then the second is poems. So kind of splitting this into two pieces, comparing the skills and then looking at the poems. So slightly different from last time, where it may, may be a little bit of everything together. This one today is going to split it into the two pieces and hopefully uh, it might be a little bit easier uh, to get through it and to do well. Okay, so here we have got two images of different animals in their natural environments. Okay, and Colour practicing comparison skills, I just want you to think about one thing that makes them different and one thing that makes them similar. Simple. Now, I imagine that you spotted some really obvious differences between the elephant and the polar bear, uh, and you probably spotted a couple of similarities too. But that is because you know something about elephants and polar bears. They're, they're, I think they are things that you have um, encountered before, and they're fairly basic. Uh, understanding of what uh, you have a very basic understanding of what, of what they are. Now, when you compare poems, um, you can use exactly the same skills that you just use when you compare those two animals. The difference is that the knowledge and understanding you have about poetry is going to be less secure. So, the element, the key element uh, when comparing poems is actually being confident that you know and understand what you are comparing. And that's why, when you, if you're comparing poem A to poem B, um, you would Tend you struggle because you wouldn't have that confidence that you're doing the right thing. It's not as easy to compare an elephant to a polar bear. So here we are with our two friends, the elephant and the polar bear, once again. Um, when we compare these two images of the animals, uh, we need to make sure that we compare relevant elements. So you wouldn't compare the ears of the elephant with the paws of the polar bear because that wouldn't necessarily be a relevant comparison. The paws of the elephant or the feet of the elephant and the paws of the polar bear would be a more relevant comparison. So you try and compare things that kind of go together. So, for example, you could compare these images of the animals based on the size of the animals, the colour of the animals, the habitat they live in, the diet that they, they live on, and how they survive in the wild. So some of those things might be similar, and some of those things might be very clear differences. But because we're, we were looking at images of animals, you could also look at them at these images in a different way. You could actually compare the images of animals based on the, the photographs and the way the photographer has taken the pictures. So... But they are both portrait uh, shots. They're both in that in the portrait layout. They both use long shots, as you can see the head to toe of both animals. And the composition in the shots is also quite similar. There's a similar amount of foreground. Then the animal dominates the image, and there's enough background as well in the shots, so you can kind of get a flavour of where they are. So these two images can be compared in at least two ways, what the images are about and the way the photographer has created them. And that approach to comparison will be very useful when it comes to poetry. So just like when we compared the animals, you need to make sure that when you compare poems that you're comparing relevant elements. So title versus title, opening line compared to opening line, ending line compared to ending line, rhyme pattern compared to rhyme pattern, etc, etc. So when you compare these poems, you should compare the poems based on the stories they tell, 
the themes they explore, the tone that they have, and the emotions they express. And that's, that's basically one angle. And the other way you can compare the poems is their use of language, the form that they've been written in, and the structure, how they've been put together. So just like the images of the animals, poems can be compared in at least two ways. Basically, what the poem is about and the way the poet has, been, the way the poet has written them. OK, so we're going to try writing a comparison paragraph now. Don't worry, uh, you're not going to write a paragraph about poetry, you're going to be writing out the animal images, and the next slides uh, will help you get ready for this challenge. So before we can actually write a comparison paragraph, we need to have a question. And that question will have a specific focus, which should be the main idea in your answer. So if the question was, photographers take pictures of wild animals showing them in their natural habitats, compare how animals are suited to the environment they live in, then your answer would have to be compare how each animal is suited to their habitat and this would include you picking out key details that show how each is able to survive. You might also comment on the differences between the animals and how they survive as well. So that's kind of the approach we're taking. The question is about the environments the animals live in so and how those animals are suited to that environment. So here we are. There is the key focus of the question. question how animals are suited to the environment they live in. And to tackle that question, you need to pick out uh, key details that show how each is able to survive. Okay, that's, that's the key. So you need to find those key details that are gonna be useful in answering this question. Okay, so here we are again, same pictures. Now, when we think about these images and the animals and their environments and how they're suited, first of all, we need to identify the actual environment they're in. So the elephant is in a very hot environment. These are present colors, that better? Maybe. And the polar bear is in a freezing cold environment. So they're not in the same environment at all. However, they are both examples of extreme temperatures. So although they are different temperatures, they're both extreme. The elephant, as you can see, has large ears. Oh dear, that's not very good. Oh, that's gone. Has large ears that help to keep it cool. And the polar bear has got thick fur to keep it it warm. So although they are different uh, exam different details, both of these animals have got a, a physical attribute that makes them suited to their habitat. So again, the details are different. One's in a hot place, one's in a cold place. One's got big ears to keep it cool. One's got thick fur to keep it warm. The details are different, but the principle is the same. Both animals have got physical uh, attributes that enable them to survive in the environments that they live in. So here you are now with your task. Try to write a comparison paragraph about how the animals are suited to the temperature of their environments. Try to do it in about five minutes and make sure you write about both the elephant and its environment and the polar bear and its environment. Okay, so good luck with that. Pause the video here and uh, start it again when you've finished your own comparison paragraph about these animals. Okay, so well done for completing or having a go at your comparison paragraph. Here's one I have prepared for you and hopefully this will uh, be similar to what you've done. Let's just read it together. Both images of animals show they suit the temperature of their natural habitat. The first image shows the elephant surrounded by a hot, dry and dusty environment. The elephant has big ears to help cool its blood in such heat. Similarly, the polar bear also is in a harsh environment. However, for the polar bear, the location is freezing cold and icy, so it has to keep warm. 
It has thick fur all over its body, which helps it to survive in the bitter cold. It is clear that both animals are suited to the habitat they live in. So here is that paragraph again, but on this occasion I've highlighted in various colours some uh, key elements. So in the yellow highlight, I've picked out any word that has a comparison or comparing job. So basically, both is the first one. Similarly, second, also, however, and both. Uh, and this is there are five comparing words in this paragraph. Then the kind of the, the goldy brown colour. Uh, that highlight has been used to identify where spe the, specific, the specific topic of comparison uh, for the paragraph has been used. So this paragraph uh, about the animals and the environment they live in is specifically writing or focusing on how they've adapted to temperature. So anything in this kind of goldy brown colour is to do with the elephant or the polar bear and the temperature in which they are living in. The blue colour has been used to pick out any words that are a reference to the question. The red highlight is used for details from the images and the green highlight is being used to, to, to pick out where the explanation um, of those details are. So what I'd like you to do now is with your own five colours use the same colours I've got, or if you've got your, a set of your own, uh, go through your animal comparison paragraph and highlight those five different elements. You might not have all five, that's absolutely fine, but see how you've used those five ingredients um, so you get a sense of what your current status as a comparer is like. Pause the video at this point while you go through your paragraph highlighting in the different colours. Thank you. So it's time now to move away from comparing uh, cute animals and actually start comparing poetry. Uh, so things are going to get a little bit more difficult but hopefully with that lesson that we've just practised on comparing skills, hopefully with that, all that in mind, it will be easier now to compare these poems than it was last week. Okay, so before we can compare some poems, we need to have a question. And the question is compare how love is presented as destructive. And before we can answer the question, we need to have some poems. So we're going to be working on Neutral Tones by Thomas Hardy and A Complaints by William Wordsworth. And these poems have been studied by you earlier this week. So before we get into this actual task, you need to make sure that you've got what you need. So that includes the four pages uh, of notes and annotations and the poems themselves that you've already had this week. These are in your Poetry Guide textbook, which is this one here, if you've got it handy. That one there. Or if you uh, look in your Google, Google Classroom from today's lesson, uh, I'll have put those pages there as well. So those are the things you need. And it's probably worth, before going any further in, in this lesson, in just skimming over those two poems and all the notes that go with them just to refresh uh, your understanding and knowledge of what the poems are about. So have a couple of minutes, pause the video at this point, just to scan over those four pages, just to refresh your memories about what the poems are about. Okay, so I'll pause it here, give yourself a few minutes to just re uh, recap, and then press play again when you're ready. So, compare how love is presented as destructive. And we've got here we've got our two poems we've got on this side uh neutral tones by thomas hardy here we are and there is that and on this side we've got a complaint by william wordsworth so we've got the two poems clearly uh give us some space for both of them 
Now, what I'd like you to do is I would like you to think about how uh, this idea of love can be destructive. And when you think about these two poems, what is in the poems that show that love can damage or hurt someone? So give yourself a couple of minutes to make some brief notes about each poem. Uh, you've got your notes handy, hopefully, uh, from the study guide or the, from the classroom PDFs. And just make some brief notes about each poem uh, and how they could demonstrate or have uh, examples of love hurting or damaging someone. Okay, uh, on the next slide you'll see uh, my ideas, so if you want to skip to that now you can do, or you can use pause here and have a few minutes just to get your own ideas down first. So, uh, these are the thoughts that I had when I was uh, prepping this and thinking about how these poems could demonstrate damage or how that love can hurt people. So in Thomas Hardy's poem, first of all, um, the way that the speaker in that poem had, seems to approach life is that he, his love is over and the world seems kind of dead uh, or hopeless. That's how I interpret the first couple of lines in that poem. Um, I think the, the loss of love in this poem, the way that love has ended, has caused the people in this poem to hate each other. And that's really quite destructive. Um, the speaker certainly has got a very negative view towards his ex-lover. So that's, that's where that one came from. And then towards the end of this poem, the speaker uh, complains or states that he can never trust love again. And that's really quite destructive that this, this love he's had with this one person has destroyed his chances of loving anyone ever again. So he's kind of, he's going to be alone forever uh, because of the destructive nature of love. Meanwhile, over in Wordsworth's corner, um, he is kind of expressing this, the destructive power of love because he's really sad in this poem. Yes, there might be some moments where he's kind of happy and thinking about um, some jolly times with his, with this, this, this friend, but having those those moments of remembering the happy times causes him pain. So it's not quite the happy poem that it could be. Any kind of moment of happiness is still kind of wrapped up with pain and kind of sadness. Um, the poem has a sense that love is still there, but it's never going to be the same again. Okay, but it's, it's never going to be like it was. So that's those are my thoughts on how love is destructive. Um, in the two poems and hopefully your ideas were a bit similar to mine. I'm going to pause the video here to, to a recap and just have a look at those um, ideas that I've put down and, comp and add them to your own thoughts you can do otherwise if you're happy to move on uh, keep playing. So let's now try to write a comparison paragraph. Um, what we're going to focus on in this comparison paragraph is the opening lines of the two poems and how they can be interpreted to show that love is destructive. We've got on the uh, left hand side, or is it the right hand side as we look at it I suppose, um, our comparing word, the specific topic of comparison paragraph, the Reference to the question, detailed evidence and the clear explanation of these five elements that make a good paragraph. Uh, they're there just to remind us what we're looking for. And now in the middle you can see uh, my paragraph that has got some of the keywords uh, redacted. You can't see what those words are. So your task here is rather than writing a whole paragraph yourself is to read my paragraph and to uh, put in the right missing words okay hopefully not too challenging um suggest you pause the video here so you can see it while you work out what the missing words are okay so give yourself a few minutes just to do that so pause the video and then you'll have the answers on the next slide good luck so hopefully you've got the following answers both poets show that love is destructive in their opening lines. Wordsworth begins with, there is a change and I am poor. 
this tells the reader that something has gone wrong and that it has had a huge impact on the life of the speaker. On the other hand, the opening line in Hardy's poem doesn't have such a clear sense of destruction. He uses, we stood by upon that winter day. This could be just a fairly bleak setting, but it has symbolic meaning and represents how his relationship has deteriorated. It is stagnant, cold and devoid of life. Both poets use their opening lines to set a negative tone, which is then developed in the rest of their texts. So hopefully your answers to the missing words uh, was useful and uh, close to what the actual missing words were. Now at this point, if you wanted to, you could pause the video and just kind of think about where the comparing words are uh, in this paragraph, where the, sp the specific topic of comparison appears in this paragraph, that's the opening lines, um, where the reference to the question appears, uh, where the detailed evidence appears, and where there's clear explanation. If you wanted to, you could highlight this paragraph in those colours. You don't have to do that, but it might just give you a little bit of a, a, a chance to study a little bit closer. In a moment, I'm going to ask you to write your own paragraph okay so this slide here is useful to give you that framework and that how to get your paragraph together how each sentence kind of joins up to make the paragraph so come back to this slide uh, in a minute when you've seen the final task of today's lesson which is to write your own paragraph that's on the next slide um, but like i said rewind come back here have a look at this again as much as you want to help you structure uh, and put together your actual comparison paragraph that you're doing as the final part of today's lesson. So time to go on to the next slide uh, and we'll see what's waiting for you there. So here we are, final slide. And you're basically, what you're trying to do with this task is you are going to write another paragraph about how love is presented as being destructive. But on this occasion, you are going to focus on how the poems end in that red circle there. So that's what you're going to focus on, how the poems end. So the first, the example we worked, just worked on was about the opening lines. Your solo project, as it were, is going to be on the, how the poems end. And like I said, you can go back and look at the previous slide to help you structure the paragraph. Once your paragraph is done, uh, please submit your work through Google Classroom. Uh, if that's causing you a bit of a problem, you can email it to me at my school email. So that's the final part of today's lesson, that's the final task. Uh, look forward to seeing what work you hand in. Uh, in the meantime, uh, concentrate, uh, try not to get too distracted by anything around you. And if you're running out of time, you can always come back to this uh, later on and finish it off, okay? Hopefully you're okay, I'll see you soon. Have a nice weekend.